many people are having this issue, estrogen dominance. Now, somebody will ask, what is estrogen dominance? Remember, estrogen plays a very big role when it comes to what? Reproductive parts. Especially in females. Estrogen helps breast tissue to grow. It also helps the lining of the uterus to what? To start building up. Endometrium forming for what? Implantation. It also helps you know, the oocyte, that is the egg, to mature in the ovary for it to release during ovulation. So you can see estrogen is really playing a very big role. But the moment estrogen becomes excess, that is why we call it what? Estrogen dominance. And anytime you have excess estrogen, it can lead to a lot of issues like endometriosis, like ovarian cysts, like swing move. So many kind of issues can come out as far as you have excess estrogen or hormonal imbalance. Now, let's look at some of the causes of this estrogen dominance. Now, look at here, guys. You can see I have drawn a line right here. And from 1 to 14, we call it what? Follicular phase, okay? Follicular phase. And from 15 to 28, we call it what? Luteal phase. What it means is that so you can see from 1 to 14, estrogen goes up and it falls okay then right then from luteal phase it still remains down but when you come to progesterone what happens is that on follicular phase it's very low but the moment egg is released it start going up progesterone start going up okay let me use this pen progesterone start going up so you can see now it has shoot up can you see that it is balanced so always Progesterone is there to balance estrogen, okay? And corpus luteum is what really release or produce this progesterone after ovulation, okay? So this is balanced. Now look at this, guys. You can see when I draw this pivot right here and I put this on top, you can see they are balanced, right? This is progesterone, this is estrogen. You can see they are balanced. But the moment estrogen become like this, guys, I want to ask you a question. Are they balanced? No. You can see the estrogen is more than the progesterone. And we call this one estrogen dominance. Which means the hormones are not balanced. Okay. And if you look at this graph, you can see instead of it to be in this way, it's rather behave like this. You can see progesterone going down whilst estrogen is still being at that level. This is what we call it what? Estrogen dominance. Is it okay, guys? Now let's come back to the causes of these estrogen dominance. Now, the first one is what? Excess fats. If you have excess fats, you can have these estrogen dominance. In what way? Because these fats can break down to produce a lot of estrogen. And this estrogen, when they become excess, that is when you're gonna have what? Estrogen dominance. That is when you have excess estrogen and low progesterone. Now, the next one is what? Is what? Diet. What do I mean by diet? First of all, let's pick alcohol. You see, if you are taking more alcohol, if you are consuming a lot of alcohol, this is what happens. Your liver will focus much on breaking down the alcohol instead of what? Breaking down the estrogen. Okay, so it's very important for you to make sure you cut off, okay? You cut off the alcohol so that the liver can be able to break down your estrogen, okay? Then also meat. You know, some meat, some meat right here, are uh, what are uh, genetically modified okay it means that they have been modified in order to help it to grow bigger to grow faster so that they can come to the market you know some people do this in order for them to enrich themselves okay so what it means is that some of these meats contain xenoestrogens what it means is that they contain some estrogens which can be more dangerous to our health okay so some of these foods that are given to some animals to feed on some of them contain some of these what xenoestrogens okay and this thing can cause issue to mankind meaning that when you have if you're eating meat that contains a lot of estrogen of course you can raise your estrogen level when consuming such kind of meats okay now the next thing is inflamed liver inflamed liver so this is your liver if this liver is inflamed or if this liver 
has a lot of fats around it, meaning they are what? Fatty liver. It can also slow the breakdown of what? Of, I mean, it can also slow the breakdown of the estrogen. Now remember, in this liver, this is where we have phase one. Phase one and phase two of what? Estrogen breakdown, okay? So with this, it tells you that liver plays a very big role when it comes to breakdown of estrogen, okay? So when it breaks down, it now expels to kidney and then it comes out as a urine. And sometimes the breakdown of the estrogen will be stored in the gallbladder, okay? It will be stored in this gallbladder. And this gallbladder will expel it to the intestines and then we what? We will excrete it or we will, you know, bring it out as a, you know, as a phasis, okay? So you can see how important, important liver is, okay? So when your liver is inflamed, it can slow down the process or it can slow down the breakdown of this what? Estrogen. And that can what? Cause what? Estrogen dominance, okay? Now, the next thing is constipation. Constipation. How can constipation cause or leads to what? Estrogen dominance. Now, watch here, guys. This is your intestine, right? This is your large intestine and small intestine. You can see there are some, there are some feces right here. There are some feces, right? So some of these feces can be recycled, okay? It can be recycled back to what? To estrogen. Can you see that, guys? So some of these feces, some of these two can be recycled back to what? Estrogen, okay? And that process is called what? It's called anterior hepatic, anterior hepatic recirculation, okay? Or anterior hepatic recirculation. That is the process at which some of the stools or some of the, you know, the feces in the large intestine recycle them back to what? To produce estrogen. So it means that constipation can also lead to what? Excess estrogen or estrogen dominance, okay? Then the next one is what? Dysbiosis. Dysbiosis. So what is dysbiosis? You see, in our guts, we have in our guts, we have bad and what? Good bacteria, right? So when these bad bacteria, they produce some enzyme called what? Beta glucuronidase, okay? Ronidase, okay? So this, this bad bacteria will produce the enzyme called what? Beta glucuronidase. So another thing. So your bacteria in your guts can increase what? Estrogen dominance. Okay, they can produce a lot of estrogen and that will lead to what? Estrogen dominance. Now, the next thing is what? Unovulatory cycle. Okay, unovulatory cycle. What is unovulatory cycle? You see, when we pick 28 days menstrual cycle, we all know that on the 14th day, that is where ovulation happens, right? So, it has to happen naturally. In some people, they don't ovulate. Okay, so assuming this is the ovary, okay, on the 14th day, the egg has to be released, okay? Then it goes through this, this fallopian tubes, okay? This egg is not releasing. So when it's not releasing, you are, we call it what? An ovulatory cycle. No release of what? Egg. So no ovulation, okay? And when that happens, I, are we going to get progesterone? No, because remember, after ovulation, the remaining tissue or the remaining structure that forms will be forming something called corpus you know corpus luteum okay so this corpus luteum is responsible for producing what progesterone so now that there is no ovulation can we get corpus luteum to release progesterone no okay so an ovulatory can also lead to what estrogen dominance because if there is no progesterone of course you're going to have high estrogen because no progesterone is coming to balance the estrogen. I hope you understand, guys. Now, the next thing is xenoestrogen. That is where I want you guys to pay rap attention. Xenoestrogen. What is xenoestrogen? Xenoestrogen simply means what? And you know, estrogen mimics, okay? So, those chemicals mimic estrogen, okay? It has gotten some of the structures, molecular structures of what? Estrogen. So, they look like the same. They have this kind of similarities, okay? So, example of some of these xenoestrogen is what bpa that is what bisphenol a okay bisphenol a so this chemical they use it to what to do some plastics okay so reason why some plastic you can see they are soft you know very very soft some of them use this bpa that is 
bisphenol A, okay? And, and this bisphenol A contains 